Hello everybody, I'm Alex Karsher. I work on the Azure Functions team, and today I'm going to show you how to make an open API definition for your function app. For this tutorial, we're going to follow the open API definition tutorial on the Azure Docs page. You can find this link in the video description. An open API definition is an API metadata language that allows you to create documentation for your API that's human readable and machine readable. So once you have this open API doc, you can use it in Visual Studio to automatically generate client SDKs or in Postman to automatically make a Postman collection or wherever open API definitions are consumed. For this tutorial, we're going to create a simple API, then we're going to make a template open API definition, fill it in with our specific API info, and then test that definition to make sure we got it right. So first we're going to go over to the Azure portal where I have this open API demo function set up. Now I've already filled in an API for this and it's a little different than the tutorial online. This API uses the Microsoft Cognitive Services API to take in customer feedback, detect what language that feedback's in, and then translate the word thanks into whatever language the customer is given feedback. So I have a sample request here in Portuguese, and if I run that through my function, the response I get back is thanks in Portuguese. Pretty cool. So this built-in testing tool is awesome for seeing how your API requests and responses are going to be structured. Here I can see real easily in my request body, I have a JSON object with one string titled feedback. And in my output, I'm just returning one string with the thanks. In order to generate my API definition, I'm going to first want to remove all of the API endpoints that I'm not using in my function. I've already gone in here and set my allowed HTTP methods to selected methods and then disabled all but the post verb. So now you're going to want to go to your function app settings to enable API definition hosting. In the function app settings, there's this API definition blade now up at the top. By default, your function is going to be set to external URL that will let you host your API definition elsewhere. And we're going to want to change it over to host our API definition in the function. Now, when you come over here, there's not going to be any definition in here, so you can generate a template based on the function that you just made. This is going to scan your function app for the enabled HTTP endpoints and populate as much as we can in this API definition. You can see here that we've grabbed your function's URL, the base, UR the base URL, all the supported transport protocols, and then all the supported verbs for this endpoint, which for us is just post. This operation object is blank, with the only thing filled in being a description that you should replace it with an actual operation object. And we've also filled in the API key for you down here. So if you were following this tutorial, you'd want to paste in the sample API definition that we have here. But for this, it's a little bit modified for my API. I'm going to grab this one here and paste it into my operation object right here, replacing this post object. So what I've done here is I've set the produces consumes encoding type, and I've given one parameter in the body named feedback and one response parameter that is of type string. So now you can see on the right, this UI has updated to show my new schema. I can see that, that request object and that response object. And there's actually a built-in testing procedure in this UI so that I can make sure that I'm sending my request correctly. So what I'm going to need to do first for this is copy my API key, because I do have API key authentication here. So I'm going to save this real quick, go back to my function, hop over to the Manage tab, grab my function's API key, head back to the definition blade, and then inside of this UI, I'm going to change the authentication to, from being a blank key to my function's key. Click Authenticate, and now when I hit Try this operation, I'm going to see my formatted request here has the, add that API key embedded. So I can go into this feedback box and give it another sample request. This time I'm going to grab some feedback in simplified Chinese, paste it in here. I can see that that's been added to the request body, and then hit send request. And I get a 200 back, which is fantastic. And in the body, I get thanks in simplified Chinese, I'm assuming. So awesome, now I know that this API definition matches the actual underlying API, so I'm going to hit save. Now, on the left side, you can see the function level controls, and the most important for you is this API definition URL. If you copy this and paste it into the browser, you can see 
the raw open API definition for this function. This is formatted in JSON, which is of note because in the editor, the API definition is formatted in YAML for easy editing. This API definition is going to be what you can share with third parties with any open API enabled software to start sending requests to your application. And in Azure enabled applications like, like uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, anybody logged into your same Azure subscription is going to be able to see that URL without having to copy paste it, remember it, email it, however you need to share it. You can automatically just select that function name and generate an SDK in Visual Studio, which is pretty neat. So that's it for this tutorial. This feature is in preview, so if you go back to this doc and scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a GitHub link where you can make issues with any requests, recommendations, feedback you have about this feature. We're going to be improving it going on. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.